Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Woodson where we go over tips, tricks, and information on van instrument repair. Today is also the fourth Wednesday of Saxtember, 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 Saxtember. Today is our day where we release another saxophone from the Sax Pro Shop here at Music Medic, and today it's going to be our low A uh, remanufactured, low A modified YA. YSS, YSS 675. This soprano was part of the development of the alpha key. So when we made the alpha key, the, the development for the alpha key was partially done on this soprano here. So this soprano has a independently functioning low A key uh, that we're going to talk about this Friday and you can hear it played this has got, uh, we've had, it has the low A key added to the lower stack. It's also got some stainless steel pearls, which we made here at Music Medic. And it's been refinished, has custom thumb hook and some other doodads that make it amazing. It's got all the bells and whistles. Surprisingly, all... no bells and no whistles, though. Although it does have one bell. One, That's one, a little bit longer. One bill? A one bill? One, one bell. bell. One bell. So you're going to get to see that on this Friday. Uh, with our good friend Benny Hill. He's going to be here. He's going to play that. And you can also win a set of custom key risers if you put Sax Timber into the comments below. So just take this hashtag here and put it into the comments and you'll be entered into the drawing this Friday and you can win a set of custom key risers. Um, we want to thank... Uh, this was this video actually came from a viewer. It did. Is really yeah, the cool. idea. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so... Make sure you enter the giveaway and you can get into that. And thank you guys for commenting and asking for different types of content. We're really happy to do that for you here and answer all your questions if you have any of them. Um, speaking of soprano, we decided to do the left-hand table uh, based on our viewer's request. And so we're going to talk to you about the Vortex Air Torch and kind of the problem that it solves uh, in band instrument repair, particularly with an instrument like this that has a lot of materials, pads, and uh, potentially burnable surfaces like lacquer or uh, plastic pearls. Um, so we're going to take a look at soprano saxophone and how we use the Vortex Air Torch on that. Um, so Ryan, before yes. we before we uh, <laughs> yes, Rich. before we talk about the Air Torch, let's just talk about um, let's just talk about heat and the difference between using an open flame for padding on saxophones and say uh, air, hot air, like we use with the, the air torch. Absolutely, yeah, a traditional tool in the band instrument repair trade is just a butane torch. I use these for a number of years for basically everything. Uh, you know, you can do your padding, uh, you can do a lot of soldering. Um, so it's, it's really a little bit of everything. You just refill the butane here and there uh, on the end and then there's your flame. Okay, and it's a very, you can see it's a blue flame. It's a fairly hot flame. You can do soldering with this. Um, some other techs like to use an alcohol lamp, something like this, where you can actually adjust the wick. And then you can see it's a much smaller flame. It's tough mm. to see on, on camera. Uh, it is a blue flame, but it is a much smaller flame. I would use this uh, a lot of times with working on clarinets. Um, it does have a slightly lower temperature than the flame of a butane torch. Um, which can reduce the risk of burning, scorching, melting plastic and wood and all that. Um, the traditional way is to use a butane torch like this. The downside, not saying it's wrong, but the downside of using a butane torch is it will burn materials. This represents a piece of cork, whether it be a key cork or a neck cork or whatever you're working on. It could be felt, uh, could be mother pearl touches, it could be plastic pearl touches. I mean, it could be anything definitely lacquer. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you can see if I put this on this, even if I'm fanning, moving fairly fast, you can see what's happening to this oh. piece of cork where it's starting to actually scorch. Okay? Yeah. And you can imagine if I were to be padding and I would to aim this at a key cup for an extended period of time, if I had a plastic pearl, it would have been melted. If the felt underneath of that uh, was exposed slightly uh, or the flame got to that, it would be scorched uh, and burnt. And then obviously the, the lacquer would be probably messed up as well. Can um, you before can you show them the pearl protectors too? Because sure. these guys may may not have seen these. So yeah, so this is traditional way of protecting the pearls or protecting materials you don't want to burn when you're using a butane or open flame um, to pad. And you would basically just 
use this. And some guys can make them, some guys buy them. It's just basically a cup on a stick and you just cover whatever you don't want to be burned. So if I'm working on this pad cup right here and I don't want to burn this, this pearl, I would cover it like this. Was that the old man pointing? That was the old man pointing, yes. That's me, the old man. Is, you know, here it is right here. So you're just going to cover that like so. And you can use this to also cover materials you don't want to get burnt, in addition to actually pearls yes. or pad cups. Yes. So it, it, it works fine. But if you have an air tor a, a Vortex air torch, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. 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 So we... We, we don't have to worry about burning right, materials. Right, because it's not an open flame. It's just hot air. It's a lot like what I'm saying all the time. A lot of just hot air being spewed out into the atmosphere. What do they, um, when they're using the air torch, I know it comes with a couple of different tips. So you, the air torch is hot air. It's obviously not too hot. No, it's not too hot. It goes from 100 degrees up to 500 degrees. 100 degrees, I will use a lot of times if I'm putting a network on and I have contact cement and I want to dry it quickly, I will use... Air torch at 100, 100 degrees just to kind of, um, uh, I guess, hasten the, the drying process, uh, quicken the drying process. Um, if you're using it 500 degrees, I'll use that a lot of times to just install pads where I need a lot of heat, heat that pad cup up, but it's not too hot where it's going to burn the lacquer. Um, the air torch does come with a couple of different tips. You can see the largest tip here. There it is. Okay. This is the medium sized tip. And what I have on the actual air torch is the smallest tip and it does have this uh heat resistant i believe it's silicone rubber whatever it is yeah um protectant silicone. so if you do touch a a, um, a pad cup or a touch or whatever uh, it's not going to scratch it um, but if you're going to do using if you're going to use an air torch on a soprano or even a smaller instrument like piccolo oboe clarinet i would recommend using the smallest tip okay right, i will use the biggest tip a lot of times if i'm like i said first putting pads in or if I'm working on a bigger instrument, basses, berries, hmm. bell keys on a tenor sax, alto sax, um, you know, you can kind of customize it for however you like. But let's, I guess, show them the air torch, unless you have any other. Well, no, I, I, wish, I want to show them the air torch, and I want to show how the air torch is not going to burn material. Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to sure. first, guide us. First guide. thing you'll notice here is we do have these, these three presets. Um, it normally comes set at 100, 200, and 300 degrees for the different presets, but you can change those. So I have for, for my for I, I have sorry for my first preset is 100 degrees, which is the temperature right here, and then I have right here this 100 is the airspeed. Okay, so that's also set at 100. The other great thing about the air torch is you can um, you can adjust how much air hot air is being blown out of the handpiece, which is great, especially if you're working on smaller things like a soprano sax left hand stack cool okay so wait wait let me interrupt for a second the yes. the airspeed is also able to be preset absolutely. along with the temperature absolutely yes okay so independently set so i have for my highest one i have it set at 417 degrees at 100 percent airspeed so okay. when i pick that hand piece up it automatically turns on it heats up to 417 degrees it's getting there. There it is right there, 470 degrees, and it stops. So it doesn't get any hotter than that. All right. If I go to my second preset, I have that set at 360 degrees with, there we go, 360 degrees with 65% airspeed. So when I pick that up, it's going to go to 360 degrees. And then the airspeed is only blowing out at 65. I do want to show them a little difference. Let's show them this is, I've set this at back to 417 degrees with 100%. Okay. So if I go to that piece of cork that I was burning with my butane torch, if I do this, even if I'm moving it around like I did with the butane torch, it's not scorching. If I hold it steady for a little bit. It should, right? It, yeah, it's, it's not scorching it like... The air torch did. So that's 100%. And you can see. Oh, the gas torch scorched. Yes, yes. You the can see. gas torch scorched. Yes. So you can see with 100% how that neck cork kind of wavers in the wind. If I turn that down to 65 airspeed, you see how it doesn't move as much? So the air is blowing out much, much slower. Okay. Which is can be helpful, especially if you're working for smaller areas. The one caveat 
Okay, if you can, always try to work with this at 100% airspeed. Okay, there are just a few occasions where I do need to, ch to change that. The biggest reason is I don't want to keep that heat trapped in the handpiece for too long of a time. Cool. Okay, the nice thing about this is even if I have this airspeed set at 65, when I hang this up and it powers down, it goes to 100%. So it cools the handpiece down much, much quicker, which is a good safety feature. Can you also show them if they want to, say, use this like they would a Bunsen burner, gas torch, yes. alcohol lamp? How do they turn the air torch into like a fixed heat source? Something like this. A lot of times guys will just take their air torch or their, their butane torch and they'll tip it down like this. These have the same feature. You can actually tip this onto the side like so if you need to. Um, the old school method, Kurt and I used to do this quite a bit working with the air torches. We would take it and we would delicately place it on top and you can see that's very stable like it's, oh that is definitely not going to fall off so you can see it's, it's a great way to keep that air torch on when you need two hands to do something but but wait there's more <laughs> all right this little Love red it. button right here yeah right? if you press this red button the air torch automatically turns on and stays on so even though it's in the hand piece so i press the red button it's continually blowing now so you can see i can put that over top and i can work with two hands, if I'm heating up a pad cup and I'm putting the pad in or I'm doing whatever, it's now like a traditional standalone torch. And again, to turn it off, press that red button, it automatically cools itself down and you're good to go. I can hear that, that air going up to 100% yep. too. Hey, if you're watching this and you didn't see the beginning of this video or if you're watching this video not live and it's not Friday yet, uh, take this hashtag Saxtember and put it into the comments for this video. We're going to enter you into a drawing on Friday where we play this YSS 675 soprano. You'll get to hear that. You'll get to hear the low A. You also get to hear our, our good friend Benny Hill's feedback about how the instrument uh, feels, the weight of it, the balance of the low A. The alpha key. The alpha key. Uh, this is one of the first versions of the alpha key. So we'll get Benny's input on that, and you'll be also be... You'll also be able to hear it. So take Sax Temper and put it in the comments for this video, whether you watch it right now or you watch it uh, a little later, and we'll enter you into the drawing for this week. Uh, Ryan, let's get back to the soprano. Uh, and can you show us your kind of basic technique for using the air torch with the left hand stack on a soprano? Absolutely. So, for an example, I'm going to use this little key right here, this little bis key. Okay, nice thing about this biscuit it has an arm down here. You can see it moving right there. So if I wanted to work on this and I didn't want to burn the pearl or, you know, the, the bis pearl or the A pearl or the felt that's underneath that A pearl, I can just press that key down like so, pick up my air torch, let it heat up, and then I can go in and heat up. And I can, you can see I can just directly put it right next to that bis pad cup and it's going to only heat that bis pad cup up. I don't have to worry about burning lacquer. I don't have to worry about burning pearls. I don't have to worry about burning materials. Okay? I don't have to do one of these things with the air torch where you do a lot of fanning. That stems from guys working with the butane torch so they don't keep it in one area and burn that lacquer. So when the air torch, you can just put it right on. it. Okay? You don't have to do one of these where you're heating everything up around it. So easy as that. Easy as that. I will use a lot of times my artisan pads like to do my my pad work float my pad around and you're done wow they made that's that it. look really easy yeah, that's it Boom. so with the air torch it kind of eliminates this huge problem with the gas torch being too hot yeah it's tough enough to, to do padding on a soprano and it's even tougher if you're using an open flame and you're worried about burning felts burning corks you know burning lacquer um burning pearls burning yourself <laughs> when you're when you're putting in pads I know some people might be thinking this question. I know you are. Yeah. Uh, what is a, a common, uh, or what's your go-to adhesive for installing pads? My go-to adhesive is shellac, uh, and specifically this clear shellac. Uh, if I'm applying it on all the pads at once, I'm usually using the Z-Gun with the cartridge that contains the clear shellac. Um, some guys like to use blue pellets, mm -hmm. um, shellac, hot melt. It, it's completely up to you. The great thing about the air torch is you can take whatever melting temperature, let's say your glue pellets melt at 360 degrees, you can set your torch to 360 degrees and it will melt your glue pellets. Cool. 
So, and then you don't have to worry about scorching or burning any of the other materials that surround it. Same thing with, with the shellac. If the melting temperature of shellac, let's say for sake of argument, is 420 degrees, you can set your, your temperature to 421 degrees. So it just is one degree higher and it melts it without doing any other damage, heat damage to the surrounding areas. Can you also show them the donut pad? Now, I know this instrument doesn't have the donut pad. Oh, now I'm hungry. Uh, so for those of you who maybe have a, a vintage instrument or a vintage straight soprano, they often have that donut pad. Yes. Um, how do you pad it, the donut pad? Donut pad, for those of you that are unfamiliar, it's, it's right here. You have this little C key right there. And it's actually a series of two keys that are stacked on top of each other. You have what is considered the donut pad, which is it's basically a key cup with a hole in it. Okay. And then there's another pad cup, traditional pad cup, that sits over top. And they actually kind of work independently. That donut pad, and it's for when you play high C sharp. You can almost call it a high C sharp compensator. Hmm. When you play high C sharp with the octave key, that note tends to be very sharp on saxophone. So what will happen is when you press that octave key down, that donut pad will come down first. Okay? And that smaller hole, that air venting out, lowers the pitch slightly. Okay? And then if you play any other note, that regular pad will come on top and that closes it. So the trick is heating up this donut pad and this top pad separately. So you're not heating both up and you're trying to do two padding things at once. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will isolate one and then the other. And usually I'll do the donut pad first because that's on the bottom. Okay. So maybe I'll take this other key off. I'll do my padding on it. Or if I need to, I will cover it up, cover the top pad up, do what I need to do. I'll, a lot of times I'll use my artisan pad slick. Um, do my padding on the bottom one. And then when I'm working on the top one, once I've got my donut pad where I need to be, I will actually put this in like a shield, almost like one of these pearl protectors. I will put this over top of the donut pad while I can work on that top pad hmm. separately. So, and you can see using an open flame, it's tough enough to work with those to begin with, but if you're using a butane flame, you run that risk of burning things. Gotcha. So with, with the air torch, you can you really select it. You can change the airspeed. You can change the temperature. I mean, it does pretty much everything. That's cool. That's, uh, would you say that's like your go-to padding Oh, tool? absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. This is my go-to. Air torch is my go-to. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you for telling us all about this, uh, the tool that you're using in the shop for padding. And want everybody to make sure you hit that September uh, hashtag. Put that in the comments below so you can be entered into the drawing for this Friday's video, whether you watch this video now or you watch it later in the week. Uh, we are also going to be having some courses coming up. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing a video uh, kind of preview on sax mods that you can do at home next Wednesday. Well, not at home, at, at, in your home shop. Yep. Uh, and that's going to be in preparation for Ryan's saxophone modifications course. We also have a flute padding course coming up the day after that. So if you're a brass technician or if you're starting out into the world of woodwind repair, flute padding is a, uh, it's kind of a, a beast uh, and it's entirely different from saxophone padding. So we have Scott Mandeville. Uh, he's going to be here and He's going to be in his home shop and going to be giving you a full day of flute padding and shimming. And we also have a clarinet crack pinning course coming up as well as a full-on flute basics course at the end of the month. So for those of you who are brass technicians uh, or you're just getting into the trade, check out musicmedic.com for those uh, courses and sign up for them. Also hit the sax temper at hashtag ash. I almost said hashtag. Hashtag. Where is it? Hashtag. There it is. There it is. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for watching. That's going to do it for today. Uh, make sure to enter in the drawing. We'll announce it uh, Friday. And until next time, happy repairing. Is it done yet? Can I stop? Wait. Oh.